Good day, everybody. Today's video, I'm going to share with you Lake Mead and where we are today. If you like this content, please reach down to the bottom and mash the like and subscribe. It helps our channel with the algorithm, and we appreciate your assistance in that. In this video today, I'm going to show you the condition that Lake Mead's in right now. And I'm also going to show you some areas where the water is being sent to, where the water is going when it leaves Lake Mead. I hope you find it interesting. And Okay, I'm going to start out by showing you the water summary. As you can see, the current reading that was just taken on November 26th was at 1,043.36. And you can see where it started on the 27th one year ago. We were at 1,065.09. So that's a loss of 21.88 feet over one year span. Now you can see where the low water level was in July. It was around 1,040.66 roughly. And we had the flash floods and everything that, that caused the lake to come up some, but also they declined on the amount of releases they were doing, which allowed the lake to continue to go up even higher. They were still making releases, but they were minimal compared to what the normal would be. And it peaked back up again at around 146.33, 36, something in that neighborhood. And where now, like I had already mentioned today, it is down to 143.36. So from the high point so far of this year to now, we're down 3.02 feet, which you can see up here on the water summary. It shows you each of these individual things to where we're at. And it's telling us right now that the lake level is at 27.87% of its capacity. Deadpool is at 895 feet. So compared to where we're at right now, that's 150 feet-ish. And the lack of ability to produce power comes at around 1,000 feet. So it's only about 43 feet to 50 feet away from where they're going to have to stop producing power. So now what I want to do is take you and show you the various dams and locations that this water is being taken to after it leaves. According to the Bureau of Land Reclamation report, an estimated 70% of all water that passes through the Colorado River is allocated to agricultural use. This usage includes agricultural land from Wyoming to Southern California, yet a majority of the practice occurs in Southern California. The Imperial Valley alone, the irrigation district, is responsible for roughly 30% of the water that is released from Lake Mead. California is arguably the biggest beneficiary of the entirety of the Lower Basin Compact Arizona has contested California's large portion of the water rights several times in the Supreme Court. If Lake Mead continues to drop in water level, we will likely see more significant cuts to appropriated water for each compact state. However small at first, these cuts will eventually give way to rising tensions over the rights to a necessary resource. If we do not plan accordingly or take notice of the climate crisis, we will soon see water become one of the most conflicted resources in the American Southwest. The problems are fast coming upon us. So as the water leaves Lake Mead, it goes down the Colorado River and the first stop would be at Lake Mojave, which is dammed off with Davis Dam. And then from here, it goes on to Lake Havasu down the Colorado River as well. Here at Lake Havasu, the water is then pumped with the Whitsett Pumping Plant, which is on the west side of the Colorado River, north of Parker Dam. 
and it pumps the water into the San Bernardino County, which I'm going to provide a Google Earth image of that. The initial dam the water goes into is Lake Matthews, right there. And from this point, I'm going to share a little bit of Lake Matthews with you. And then we'll go on to other dams. In the... We can't get to the lake on this one here. It's protected because it's drinking water. So it's got a chain link fence around the whole entire lake. So we can't get in it. But it's very big. And you can see it's somewhat low. Okay, Skinner Lake is the next one in the line that gets water from the Colorado River, which comes through Lake Mead. So this is sharing a bit of the Skinner Lake. I don't know how we get over there to the marina. We'll have to go look for it. Skinner Lake isn't very low. It's still fairly full. It's down maybe four or five feet, six feet. I don't think so. Marina store and boat rental. The next on the list of lakes I'd like to share with you is Diamond Valley Lake. It's one of the largest lakes in Southern California and it is fed by the Colorado River that comes from Lake Mead, but it's also, the key here, is fed by the inland aqueduct that fills Paris Lake. And I'm going to share a little visual of Paris Lake because what that means is not only does uh, the Colorado River fill this lake, it can also transfer water through the other Inland Empire pipeline to Paris Lake if, to supply back and forth if needed. Okay, this is four of the, Lake Paris, this is four of the five lakes that I'm going to share with you that get water basically from Lake Mead, from the Colorado River project. And I'm going to let this one play a little bit so you can see that it's a huge lake and it's quite active for recreation, fishing. Now the fifth reservoir is Morris Reservoir and I've shared it in a previous video and there's a lot to unpack here. There's, I'm sure, a lot more than what I have brought to you here, but I thought it was um, interesting, important to know where the water is going from Lake Mead. If you found this content interesting, please mash the like and subscribe. It'll help our channel a lot. It doesn't cost you anything. Thank you for your time.